Good evening, Lizzie boys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm finally going to be reviewing Out of Fright Operetta. In the comments of my video where I showed you guys that I had gotten the doll, you guys answered that you wanted Operetta to be reviewed before the smudged Cleo and Deuce. I also held a poll on Instagram and Operetta won there as well. Though, I gotta admit, it was much closer than I was expecting it to be. Like, I think the final percentage was 45% Cleo and Deuce, 55% Operetta. So, um, yeah, that was fun. On, Inst on um, YouTube, though, it was way more in Operetta's favor. So, with that out of the way, let's begin our review. Out of Fright Operetta is the newest Monster High fan club exclusive doll, similar to Gulak Skulia from last year. She was $50 on the website and is currently still in stock. I will be leaving a link which is affiliated in the description. That basically just means if you buy using my link, I get like a dollar from it. So if you choose to use my link, thank you. I appreciate the dollar. Her box is pretty cool. We've got some dye, records, and of course, a little Phantom of the Opera mask down here. And it does seem to be her specific mask because it's heart-shaped with the like drippy stuff. It looks like her first edition doll which we will be comparing this one to later in the video. A big criticism of this doll is that her face is so different from the original. People have said that her face sculpt entirely seems to be different. And to be honest, I think I agree. The shape of the lips is very different, but again, we will get to that when we get to it. Overall, she looks very good in her box. When you flip it to the side, we have Out of Fright Operetta written on the side. And around the back, we have a description of the doll. I am not going to bother reading it aloud because I stumble over my words so much that it's embarrassing, but you can pause to read if you would like. As always, there is a prototype doll shown here. They usually use prototypes for this image, and you can usually tell because the face will have some strokes, like brush strokes in it. Yeah. Also, something of note is that every time I see this doll, her face and her body are slightly different shades of purple. Like, the face has a more bluish purple tint to it, whereas the body has a more reddish purple. If that makes sense. I don't know if you guys can see that too, or if I'm just crazy. On this side of the box, it reads Monster High. And around the top, we of course have another record. So, that is everything there is to go over with the box. And now, all that's left to do is to free her from it and look at her close up. I've been way too professional in this video. I haven't made a single joke yet. It feels weird. The box is pretty easy to open. You just need to cut two pieces of tape at the top and then you can pull the insert right out. Fortunately, there's nothing like holding it in there. I kind of hate when they do that, like when they tape the insert into the box, it just gets really annoying. So there she is up close. Her bangs actually seem to have like some sort of like fishnet texture to them. I'd argue that maybe while her hair was drying, they put like a hairnet over it. Cause they definitely put product in her hair to keep this giant curl in place. It is, it's rock solid. Also her doll stand is clear. So let's, uh, what is it stuck on? It's not coming out. Um, there is a rubber band around the center of her stand. So anyway, it's a clear stand, which is cool. I do like these. Ties holding her in place are pretty basic, just a couple around the ankles. There are some around the tips of her dress, which is annoying. I really don't like when they put ties through uh, sheer material like this, because it does leave a little hole. But overall, since they used like little ones at least, it's not gonna be that noticeable, but it is annoying to remove from the box. Okay, so fortunately, the hole is not very visible. I honestly don't see it at all, even though I just removed the tag. So, um, okay, here's another one where one should be. Once Okay, I can see it in the record, actually. It is kind of visible. Very minor complaint, though. I don't mind it terribly. When the doll's dress is, like, down, it's not like it's that noticeable, I guess. Of course, she also has a tie around her waist, as well as one around both arms and one around her hair. So, all the basic points. Okay, so the way I usually remove dolls from the box is that I grab their head and I pull it out. Once everything else, every other part of their body is free, all that's left to do is pull the head out. But I can't really do that right here because this piece behind her head is blocking me from doing so. There might be an alternative way to get it out though and I might just have to remove this snow. Okay, this is attached to this. Okay, this is tough for me. Um... I feel like I'm solving a puzzle or something and I'm not smart enough for those. Okay, the solution I decided on was taking out her earrings so I wouldn't damage them and then just 
pulling and it worked pretty well, I would say. Right out of the box, we do have a little visible bald spot. That's always fun. Even when I try to pull her hair down to cover it, it is ultimately still visible. So it looks like they just forgot to root an extra plug in there, but overall it's fine. Yeah, I'm still unsure how I feel about this face. It just looks so different from what we're used to for Operetta. One immediate major positive is that they got her tattoo as well as her birthmark that goes all along her body here pretty accurately, but here you can definitely see that her head is a different color plastic from her body. I don't understand how that happened. Around the back, we have her certificate of authenticity as well as the base of her stand and her clip. I'm happy to see that they gave her a red stand. It's really cute. Though Gulia's was tran- um, I almost said transparent, that's not what I meant. Um, <laughs> it was uh, metallic, so this one being a solid color Mildly disappointing, but nothing that I mind too terribly. All right, so fresh out of box, there is some box hair to deal with. I would recommend giving her a wash because it just feels like it has product in it. It's not rock solid like rainbow high hair is or anything, but it just feels a little like greasy, just a bit. So if you like redoing your doll's hair anyway, um, obviously that was a given for you but if you usually leave your dolls as is i would just say just give her a wash though she does have some nice um curls going on so if you'd like to keep that i'd recommend using cold water or recurling it after a boil wash it's honestly up to you her hairstyle's cute it's basic but it is cute yeah i like the big curl bang i'm glad that they gave her that back it's always been something i liked them doing with Operetta's hairstyle. It keeps dropping this little piece, so instead of putting it back on her, I'll just look at it now. There is a hole up here for her fingers to go through so she can like hold it like she's playing it, you know? So I, that's pretty cute. I guess it'd be like on this side, I don't know. But yeah, it's got a big spider on it, it's got some like studs around, and it does open. Um, is it weird? Do I have to like open it like this? This thing opens, I just don't know how to... Is it not that hard? Do I just have to stick my fingernail in here to open it? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I was overcomplicating it. So yeah, you could put um, nothing in there because there's nothing she has that comes off and needs to be stored away. So Operetta has sculpted on gloves. This is a sculpt that they've used. I want to say they've used it before. It reminds me of the sculpt that the Werecats usually used for their gloves, such as Torolai and the Twins. But um, that usually had like a little hole in it. There was usually like a little gap, but these are just full gloves covering her hands entirely. Well, her fingers and not her fingers. You know what I mean? They're fingerless gloves, but there's no like little gap here where they usually would be on the Werecat Twins. Her dress is nice. She has two little attached buttons. They are glued on and then she's got this belt, which is sewn into place, but it does, like, have Velcro. So despite it being sewn into place, it's also removable, I guess, but it's not removable because it's sewn on. So I'm kind of confused by the use of Velcro here at all. So her fishnets are actually um, just socks. They stop right there. It would have been cool if they were like a full set of fishnets, but I understand just making them socks is probably easier. It's probably cheaper, which is why Mattel would do that. Her dress overall is pretty nice. I like the general silhouette of it, and I really like what they did with the records here. And she does actually have her Phantom of the Opera skelet here printed on as well. I like that it's not like overdone, it's just that here and there. It's mostly the vinyl records printed everywhere. One thing that I don't like is her earrings, just because they could have put a little more paint detailing into them, and I don't like this color purple for the skelet. It's nowhere else on her outfit. It's like literally nowhere else to be seen on her person. So I don't get why they use that shade. It looks like it was originally supposed to be the same color as Memphis long legs, but Memphis is much um, lighter in person. He's not that very bright shade of purple. So now for the part where we compare these dolls. Obviously, I'd say the new operetta has little to nothing in common with the original. Um, their outfits are very, very different. <laughs> I don't even see similarities in like their earrings. I guess you could say like they both have um, dice present on them, 
like operetta's got a black dice like a black die here and a white die on this side whereas this one has hoops with dies as like the part that goes into her ear as well as hanging off of the hoop so that's something they both have a black heart-shaped mask this one is sewn into place on the side of her head whereas the original has it held on with some rubber bands as well as inserted into her hairstyle they both have a big curl bang but it's done differently this operetta's curl goes upwards and is held kind of in the middle with an elastic and this one has no elastic holding it and is rooted outward and curled inward you know so that's something their faces are incredibly different like looking at them side by side you can tell it's supposed to be operetta but the faces are very different her eyes are more gray on the original her lips are much larger as well there's just a number of changes here yeah it's interesting to say the least to be honest it even looks like they did her tattoo differently like i'll have to turn this one to the side as well but it does it just looks different to me i don't know maybe my original one is like misprinted maybe i should grab a different operetta i've brought diner operetta to the party and it looks like they printed her tattoo differently every time like the music notes the treble clef is much darker here than it is on the original doll here and it's the brightest on the newest doll so it looks like her tattoo is printed differently every time another similarity both dolls share is that they both have a treble clef as the heel of their shoes overall pretty cute reference though i do prefer these but these are cute too both dolls do come with a guitar purse with the original oh she's holding it a strange way but um and I did put um, Memphis long legs on her head just so they can both have their pets on their head. I thought it was kind of cute. But he doesn't like it. He doesn't like being up there. But yeah, this is the original Operetta's bag. Similar to the new one, it doubles as a purse that opens as well as a playable instrument for the doll. So it's pretty cute. Also, if you keep hearing my dog bark in the background, I don't know what to do to make him stop. But fortunately, we're about done with this video anyway. Because I don't think there's anything left to compare. These dolls just don't have as much in common as previous ones. All right, so I think that's gonna be it from me. Overall, the new operetta is pretty cool. Do I think she holds a candle to the original? Not really, but if you're an operetta fan, I do think that this is a great doll to get your hands on. As I mentioned at the start of the video, she is still in stock on Mattel Creations, and if you'd like, you can use my affiliate link in the description. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave your thoughts on Operetta in the comments below. And as always, I hope to see you in my next one. Bye!